I am Anil Kumar and in this particular video we will try to understand trigonometric ratios in the domain of 0 to 360 degrees. Question before us is for each trigonometric ratio use a sketch to determine in which quadrant the terminal arm of the principal angle lies, the value of the related acute angle beta and the sign of the ratio. Now I will take uh, quite a few examples on this page and I'd like you to participate so that you also understand while we are doing or answering these questions. So let me first sketch few quadrants right here, right? So this is the first one. I'll write down few values. Uh, I think we can get four in one row and then I'll use four in this row also. So we'll have eight examples on this particular page. Uh, let us see how many we can do in about five minutes. So let me write down some trigonometric ratios here. Let's start with sine. So sine, let us say sine of 55 degrees. Okay, and then let me write cos of 100 degrees, tan of, let us say, 120 degrees. And then again, let's put sine here. Uh, let us say 250 degrees and cos of let us say 300 degrees. Let me take some angles with negative angles. For example, we can say sine of minus 40 degrees. Uh, we can say cos of minus 100 degrees and let us say tan of minus 300 degrees. So these are the different trigonometric ratios which we are going to consider. Now, if you read the question once again, it says, for each trigonometric ratio, that means all of them, use a sketch to determine in which quadrant the terminal arm of the principal angle lies. So first, let us look into the terminal arm. As far as the quadrants are concerned, we know this is 0 degrees for us, that is 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and then getting back to 360 degrees, correct? So that is how it is. 55 is definitely in the first quadrant, so we can write terminal arm like this. That represents 55. 100 is less than 180, but more than 90, so it will be somewhere there. Approximately, 120 will be, let us say here, okay, more than 100. 250, that is 270 for us, correct? So 250, let me sketch something like this. 300 is more than 270, so we'll make it kind of like this, minus 40. Minus means we're looking for an angle which goes clockwise, so we are in this quadrant. Right? Minus 100, that means more than 90, so from here, let us say this, minus 300, that means all the way coming back to this place, so let us say minus. So that is how we can actually draw the terminal arm. Let's look at the angles once again and label them, right? So the first one is 55 degrees. It is always counterclockwise when we say positive angles. So this is 55 degrees for us. Now here we have 100 degrees. That is what we mean, 100 degrees. 120 degrees, this angle is 120 degrees. 250 degrees means all this, correct? That is 250 degrees. 300 degrees, counterclockwise, correct? Minus 40 means clockwise direction, so that gives us minus 40 degrees. Clockwise gives us minus 100 degrees and minus 300, sorry, it should be from here, like this, correct? That is minus 300 degrees. So that is the first part. So what we are saying here is, determine in which quadrant the terminal arm of the principal angle lies. So there are two things, principal angle. Now for all these counterclockwise, these are the principal angles. But the ones which we labeled with negative, those are not the principal angles, right? Principal angle is always positive and it is counterclockwise. So we have to find the principal angle. So that is the principal angle. So how much is the principal angle? Let us say principal angle theta is going to be 360 degrees minus 40, correct? So in this case it is 320 degrees. So let me write down principal angle as 320 degrees here. 
in this case it should be how much that is the principal angle correct so it is theta equals to 360 minus 100 which is 260 degrees so that is 260 degrees similarly in this particular case the principal angle is also the acute angle which happens to be 360 minus 300 let me write down 360 minus 300 so that is equals to 60 degrees so 60 degrees is the principal angle now all those angles are also principal angles so I'm not rewriting them correct now let's look into the quadrants now 55 degrees we see it is in quadrant 1 100 degrees is in quadrant 2 uh, 120 degrees is in quadrant 2 250 degrees is in quadrant 3 300 degrees is in quadrant 4 then again we have in quadrant 4 quadrant 3 and this is in quadrant 1 minus 300 degrees right now what do we need so use a sketch to determine in which quadrant the terminal arm of the principal angle lies the value of the related acute angle beta and sine of the ratio okay so let's find the value of related acute angle beta now so what is that acute angle is always the angle which terminal arm makes with the horizontal okay so that is the acute angle so we will use this particular one I am taking different color for acute angle so we say beta is equal to in this it is with the horizontal 55 degrees it is same as the principal angle now in this case beta is how much beta is 180 minus 100 degrees that is 80 degrees acute angle beta is always with the horizontal line right and less than 90 degrees here beta is equals to 180 minus 120 that is 60 degrees correct in this particular case that is beta so here it be 250 degrees minus 180 degrees correct so that is beta so beta is equal to 0 15 take away 8 is 7 so it is 70 degrees in this particular case beta with the horizontal is that angle correct so let me write beta equals to 60 degrees right here beta is 40 degrees so that is beta always you have to write beta as positive okay 40 degrees in this case beta is the angle with the horizontal that one which means it is 80 degrees how did we get that 180 minus 100 in this case beta is your acute angle 60 degree itself do you see that so likewise we can get all the acute angles so to get the acute angle we have to always measure it with the horizontal you get it perfect now lastly the sine of the ratio how do you get the sine of the ratio we apply the cast rule okay so for writing the sign let me take another ink and let it be light blue this time okay sine 55 now what we know here is let me sketch one more quadrant here and write the rule so let us say that is the quadrant and the sign is in quadrant 1 all are positive in quadrant 2 sine is positive tan is positive in quadrant 3 and cos is positive in quadrant 4 with that we can write down the signs sine of 55 since you are in quadrant 1 it has to be positive cos of 100 you are in quadrant 2 here only sine is positive not cos so cosine will be negative tan of 120 in quadrant 2 tan is negative tan is positive in quadrant 3 sine of 250 has to be negative in quadrant 3 correct cosine of 300 which is in quadrant 4 will be positive in this particular case we need sine which is going to be negative Cosine of minus 100, quadrant 3, will be negative. Tan of minus 300, quadrant 1, all are positive. So this is also positive. So that is how you can get positive or negative sign. Right? So in short, what did we do? 
let us have a recap on this. So first thing is we found what the first we sketched it, right? So whenever you sketch at that time, principal angle is counterclockwise with the help and then let us say like this. So that is the principal angle. This is the quadrant number and the acute angle is always with the horizontal. So you have to take away the principal angle difference with the horizontal line. To find the sign, we have to apply this rule, which for some it is all students take calculus or cost rule. Right? So that helps to answer these kinds of questions. I hope it really helps you. I made a variation here. Instead of principal angle, I took negative angle so that to give you an idea that at times you could be working with angles which are negative. Negative means clockwise. Principal angles are positive and they are always counterclockwise as shown in the first five sketches. So that way the last three are slightly different but that's a variation. But I hope with this you understand trigonometric ratios in the domain 0 to 360 degrees. You also understand how to find the related acute angle and sketch principal angles. I hope that helps. Thank you and all the best.